I want to go through a free-to-play guide for uh, 2017. Um, this video is getting uploaded right at the beginning of 2017, so um, if you're viewing this at a much later date, then there might be some more updated things you can look into. But for today, I kind of want to do a little bit of a free-to-play guide. First, we're going to start out with um, free packs. Where can you get some free packs? And uh, for a lot of these things, I'll leave links in the description below so you can check them out on some other websites as well. But there's actually a lot of ways to get some free packs. Um, for example, uh, you get a pack for just playing on an iPod, or I mean a, on an iPhone, an, an iPad, uh, on an Android tablet, on an Android phone. Um, specifically, if you play on a Samsung Galaxy S6, um, you'll get three uh, classic packs. All of these packs that I just mentioned are classic packs. And if you had a Hearthstone account but you've neglected it for several, several months, there are new quests that they give you to get, uh, I think there's three quests and they each give you three classic packs each. So if you haven't played for a while, uh, you can get classic packs that way. Another really great deal is the welcome bundle that they currently have available uh, that each account can purchase one time and it costs $5 but you guaranteed get a classic legendary and you get 10 classic packs which is really really good deal and being a free to play player um, you're probably wondering what is the best way for you to get packs and there's a game mode called arena that is actually the best way to get packs but the thing is you need to actually be pretty good at arena um, in order to do that so um, if you can get five wins in arena, on average, uh, you'll basically be getting um, you'll be getting a pack, and you'll be getting some like more gold back, and sometimes an extra card, um, sometimes a golden card, and it'll basically be like getting a discounted pack. Like normally a pack will cost you a hundred gold, but it'll basically make a pack cost seventy gold or eighty gold or something, and you'll get another card. Um, if you can get seven wins, you'll get at least the 150 gold back. So you're getting a pack for free, and then you'll get some other bonuses. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more gold, or sometimes like a golden common. Um, and then obviously if you can get more wins, the better after that point. Everything after that is all just free additional bonus stuff. But other than that, um, the best way to get packs is just to spend the gold, and then so... How, what's the best way to get gold? Every day that you uh, log into Hearthstone, you will get a new quest. And the quests range from 40 gold all the way up to 80 gold. I think there might actually be 100 gold quests now that require like playing uh, 75 Murlocs or something crazy. Um, and every day you can re-roll one quest. And so, uh, just to show, we've got this set up here, and um, you can see, like you can't see it here, but normally there'll be a little X right there, and once per day, um, on one of your quests, you can hit that little X, and it'll re-roll it into uh, a new quest. And usually what I try to do is I try to never complete the 40 gold quests, because they're just the lowest quest and usually you can at least get a 50 gold quest and uh, what I'll try to do is so say see today I re-rolled a quest and I got the 60 gold quest so today I'm gonna complete this 60 gold quest so that I have room for a new quest tomorrow and uh, maybe it'll be a higher quest or if I try to re-roll it and it's only a 40 gold quest then I'll complete one of these 50 gold quests uh, the best quest you can get in my opinion, is the challenge a friend quest. So with the challenge a friend quest, you just need to have a friend, um, add them, and then that will have a little button, and you can challenge them to a, to a standard or a wild or a tavern brawl. Um, usually I just do a standard game. And uh, when you do that, it'll pop up for them, and all you have to do is just play the game all the way through until one of you dies or almost dies. 
and both of you will get the 80 gold. So it's kind of like a 160 gold quest because you get 80 and your friend gets 80. It's a really good quest. So I'm really always trying to do that whenever I'm uh, re-rolling my quests, trying to just get that 80 gold quest. Another really good one is the spectator quest where once again all you have to do is just have a friend and just spectate their game and if they win the game you get a pack and if they don't then you just keep spectating till they win a game and you'll get a free classic pack so that's a really great way too um, uh, another way to get free packs is every week um, from Wednesday to Sunday you can come into the tavern brawl and uh, I've already gotten my win today or my win this week and normally this chest will be closed and you can just uh, if you win one game in Tavern Brawl that week, you'll get a free classic pack as well. So every week, um, you can get a free classic pack from Tavern Brawl. Every day, you'll get a quest that you log in, and every day you can re-roll a quest. So make sure you're doing that every day, and that will be the most efficient way to be a free-to-play player. Another thing uh, for free-to-play players that is sometimes a struggle is the adventures. So um, usually the adventures, uh, they all cost money um, to get them, or you can pay 700 gold for each um, each wing. So uh, I've already unlocked all of these, but I unlocked all this whole expansion just using gold because I had I saved up the gold and uh, and I had enough. So each week they came out, I spent 700 gold and I got it. And uh, if you're curious as to um, which expansions or, or which adventures um, are the ones that you should invest in, you can always look up a guide uh, online and see which ones are the most current ones and see if some of them are going to be rotating out of standard soon. For example, Blackrock Mountain and League of Explorers is going to be rotating out within the next few months. Naxxramas has already been rotated out. Karazhan is the newest one, so it will be sticking around for quite some time. So if you're looking for an adventure to invest in, you can maybe do the Karazhan one. And uh, another thing that you might want to look into is, do you want the whole expansion, or do you only want a couple wings? You can just look up online and see which cards come with each wing. And uh, unfortunately, you can't just buy the highest wing, like wing 5 or 4, without getting the previous wings. So sometimes if, there, if there's a card in wing 4 or wing 5 that you really need, you probably just have to get all the wings before it. Um, but right now, uh, the wing that has Reno in it in League of Explorers is a really uh, high demand wing because there's so many cool Reno cards available uh, since the Mean Streets of Gadgets end. But it's going to be rotating out in uh, about 3 or 4 months. so. That's up to you if it's worth it as a free-to-play player. So now I want to talk a little bit about crafting. So as a free-to-play player, um, sometimes crafting cards can be a really tough decision because you're not trying to spend money on packs and uh, what can be really unfortunate is crafting a card and then opening it up in a pack later because essentially when you craft cards, they cost a lot more to make them than it does to disenchant them. So for example, this Jade Idol, it would cost 100 for me to make, but I would only get 20 for disenchanting it. So if I made it and then I opened up one, then I, and I've already got it now, and so now I just am going to dust it because I already have two Jade Idols, and I'm only going to get 20 dust, and I spent 100 dust to make the other one, so it's like minus 80 dust for nothing. So. Um, I know this is for free to play players, but um, maybe just a side little note if you're just somebody who you maybe want to only spend a little bit of money on Hearthstone, I would highly recommend uh, just like when a set comes out, just buy 50 packs or you know, at least before you start crafting cards, open up, use your gold or whatever it is and just open up you know, close to 50 packs if you can or 40 packs. Um, anywhere in that range so that you can at least get most of the common cards because you don't want to have to craft any common cards and then just you get a bunch of common cards over time and then you just wasted that crafting um, and, and then rare cards as well 
you really want to save your uh, dust. Another thing to note about crafting is uh, every so often uh, Blizzard will release a patch where they nerf some cards and if they are cards that you have you can disenchant them during that time for their full crafting cost. So, um, so what I've done is uh, I'll, I mean, I as you can see, I have plenty of dust right now. Um, so I don't need to just disenchant all of my um, all of my cards because uh, I I have plenty to work with right now. So what I do is uh, I save. Uh, copies of cards that I have just opened up and I don't disenchant them just in case uh, I might be suspicious that they could get nerfed in the future uh, so that I have a bunch that I can disenchant for their full crafting value so it's basically like I can craft a bunch of rares that I don't have or that I want or if you want to craft golden cards which I would not recommend as a free-to-play player but definitely um, if you've opened up a bunch of extras of cards that uh, you or just the community in general view as being cards that are really really powerful and uh, you might be afraid that they're going to get nerfed in the future uh, just keep just hang on to those extras and uh, when when a nerf comes you'll have those extras to just disenchant and get the full value for another way uh, for disenchanting cards is you can just go through we'll type in common here and you can go through all of your commons and, and, and find the cards that uh, you just know are, are no good, that you have tons of extras of. And then you can go over to them um, and you can disenchant them. And just, just disenchant those. So we'll go in here and you can disenchant. Um, you, know, you know they're not super powerful and you know you're not going to need, you're never going to need more than two, so you can just disenchant a bunch of those. So golden cards. Being a free-to-play player, you're really just never going to want golden cards. Golden cards are basically going to be your extra free money uh, for get, making any cards that you want. Uh, if you already have two copies of that card in general, then you can just disenchant your golden ones because you're a free-to-play player and you don't care about playing golden cards, so just disenchant those. Especially if you think that card is never going to see play, definitely disenchant that gold card. And like I said before, if you have some golden cards that they're extra, you know, you already have two copies of the of the normal one, and you've got the golden version as well, but you're suspicious that it could get nerfed in the future, just hold on to that card and you will get tons of value for it because um, the golden cards cost so much more to craft and since you'll be getting the full crafting value if they get nerfed so good in the description below I'll uh, try to find a potential crafting guide for you guys to look at um, as far as you know crafting some common cards rares epics legendaries what are the ones that are um, the most uh, will give the most value in the long term uh, for crafting um, but for this video I'll just give you some of my off the top of my head opinions of some good cards to craft depending on the type of decks that you want to play if you want to play a druid deck and you already have some nourishes you have some of the cards needed for uh, some of the combo druid stuff and you don't have a fandral that would definitely be uh, one of the legendaries I would craft. Plus he came out in Whispers of the Old Gods, so it's gonna be around for a while and Fandral's uh, Getting both the choose one effects is so strong as far as playing any hunter deck None of the hunter legendaries are really just So insane that you have to have them in your deck So you really don't have to worry about any of these But if you were going to craft one, I would maybe do uh, knuckles because he gets that smork in while he gets that trade in too, and it's just pretty good. For mage legendaries, Antonidas is the one to craft. First of all, he's in the classic set, so he will be around forever. Also, if Antonidas was ever to get nerfed, you would get that 1600 dust right back. For paladin legendaries, Tyrion is just so good. He's also from the classic set, so he will be around forever. 
But make sure, before you're crafting any of these legendaries, that you at least spend $5 on that welcome bundle, because getting Tyrion from that welcome bundle, like I did, is just really good. I mean, I already have three, but I'm keeping him around, because if he gets nerfed, what if he, what if, what if he gets nerfed? Ragnaros Lightlord is really a good card too, um, if you're considering crafting. He's also from Whispers of the Old Gun, so he'll be around for a while. Priest Legendaries, none of these are really crucial for uh, any specific Priest deck, except for the Reno Priest. Like, Raza is pretty good, but you don't need it. And also, with Reno potentially cycling out soon, I don't know if you'll be playing a Reno Highlander style deck, really. In priest. Next we have Rogue. Edwin is from the classic set and he is really good. Rogues combo out so hard in many of their archetypes and they can just make a really big Edwin and so if, if Rogue is just your deck you or you want to play Miracle Rogue or Aggro Rogue or whatever Edwin is definitely a really good craftable card. The rest really really not worth it. Shaman cards None of these cards really need to be crafted. There's, in fact, Agro Shaman is like tier one right now, and it only costs like 3,600 dust to make it, and you already probably have some of the cards, and uh, you don't need any of these cards. Um, if you really, really were just stuck on like a mid-range Shaman deck, uh, you could craft Alakir, I suppose, but you really don't need to. You really don't need to. For Warlock Legendaries, Kind of in the same spot. There's not really any here that you need to craft. Uh, Draxus is pretty good if you're trying to play a handlock, reno lock style deck. He's pretty cool, um, but Thorasan is going to be cycling out of standard pretty soon. And uh, Thorasan is really what makes Draxus really good because you can play Thorasan while you have Draxus in your hand and it puts Draxus down to only 8 mana. And then, uh, then you can play Draxus, and then you can use your hero power, which is really the reason you're turning into Draxus. But once again, you really don't need to craft any of these to have a good Warlock deck. You can always play a Zoo Warlock deck. For Warrior Legendaries, if you were going to craft any of them, it would probably be Gromish Hellscream. Also from the classic set, he's going to be around forever, and he's just a really good card. Lots of ways to combo to get that Enrage off and just finish your opponent off. Uh, Malkrock is another good choice. He uh, he is a pretty good value minion, and he's also from Whispers of the Old Gods, so he'll be around for a while. Now into the neutral legendaries, there's going to be quite a few really good ones, a lot of them from the classic set, and then some of them are going to be from Adventures that you just have to... Um, Maybe you're going to buy the wings of those adventures to get those. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't. it's not needed as much. There's some alternative cards that you can put into the deck instead of those cards. So let's get started. Basically, if you're trying to play any type of aggro deck right now, Patches is so insane. There's a, like Pirate Warrior, uh, Pirate Shaman, Pirate Rogue. They all get insane value off of Patches. Um, so you could craft Patches. Sir Finley Murgleton comes from League of Explorers Adventure. Uh, he's also used in some of those aggro decks to try to change your hero power into the hunter hero power, but one, this one is not necessary to do well. Blood Mage Thalnos is a really versatile card. It finds itself in a lot of decks because it gives you the spell damage. You can combo and freeze mage with it. And it's also a card that your opponent just wants to kill, but it has uh, a draw a card effect when it dies, so it kind of sucks for them to kill it. So sometimes they leave it on the board and then you get that spell damage for another turn. It's a pretty good value card. Brand Bronzebeard is pretty insane right now. There's a lot of really good battle cries in the game, and getting to trigger your battle cries twice in a combo is so good. But Brand Bronzebeard is from the League of Explorers and will also be rotating out uh, pretty soon, but you could just buy those wings if you wanted to, and I kind of would recommend that you do because once the adventures cycle out, the only way you can get those legendaries is to craft them after that, and you might just want Brand Bronzebeard around for um, for the wild format. Barnes is a really good card, and he's from the One Night in Karazhan. He 
has been known to pull a copy of Ragnaros out of the deck, some strong death rattle minions out of the deck, and it's just a good value minion, and it comes with the adventure, it's pretty good. Kazakis, he's another Reno style type card, Reno will be rotating out soon, and I've said that too many times, but Kazakis, his effect is so cool, so fun, the spells are so cool, and the interactions are so fun, and they will be fun for the rest of Hearthstone, in my opinion. Harrison Jones. This card has been known to come in and out of the meta. It really just depends on what the top tier decks are. If they are uh, weapon users, Harrison Jones usually gets teched in because it's such a high tempo play, destroying your opponent's weapon, putting a minion on the board that has pretty good stats and you're drawing cards. It's pretty good. If you're trying to play a Miracle Rogue deck or a really aggro deck, Leroy Jenkins is for sure going to be a really good card to craft. He is also from the Classic set, so he will be around for a while. I also forgot to mention Harrison Jones is from the Classic set, so he will be around forever. Recently, the Jade Golem mechanic came out, and Aya Blackpaw is pretty good. Uh, you don't need her, though, in my opinion, in order to play a Jade deck. In fact, I have played quite a few Jade Druid decks that don't even play Aya because she's such a heavy card and you just have better ways of comboing out and getting the Jade Golems out than having to spend 6 mana on a pretty slow minion. Uh, like I said before, Emperor Thorsan is cycling out soon, but he's really good and you might want to pick up that adventure just so you don't craft him, don't have to craft him and uh, and uh, play him in the wild format because he's a really cool card. Some more cards, here's the Reno Jackson. Like I said, he's cycling out soon. He's in League of Explorers, pretty good. Sylvanas is a pretty versatile card and often finds uh, a slot in a lot of decks, usually control decks, and it's just, it's just a good card. Just playing out, it's a good card. Sometimes you just force your opponent to have to trade in two of their like pretty big minions just to make it so that you don't steal one of their cards and it's, it's a really good effect. Justicar True Heart is a pretty good card, but will be cycling out pretty soon. But really cool effect. Um, pretty cool. Uh, could just see play in wild if that's your style. Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Another classic card. Another just really good card. Sees a lot of play. A lot of play. Uh, just, I, don't, I don't think this card is really ever going to get nerfed. Uh, it's, it's kind of fair, but it's kind of just really good. It's one of those cards where you... You play in the right circumstance, and if your opponent can't remove it that next turn, they're going to lose the game. Uh, just a really good card. Highly recommend uh, crafting this card if you're planning on playing just about any deck. Ragnaros is really cool. Getting closer to the end here, we have Alex Straza. Really good for um, playing Freeze Mage. Um, some other type of decks that are just trying to burst your opponent down. Playing this on turn 9, setting your opponent's health to 15, bursting him down on turn, ten, uh, turn 10 with spells. Um, and it's classic set, you're going to stick around forever. Ysera is a great card to craft. Gives you a lot of value, really good for the if you're trying to play a more control deck, a, a late game deck, something that's trying to maybe outvalue your opponent. The dream cards you get from Ysera are really good. Nizoth the Corruptor. This card came out in Whispers of the Old Gods, so it'll be around for a while. Uh, but its battle cry to summon your death rattle minions that died this game is so good. So many people uh, have just said, hey, is your deck bad? Well, just add Nizoth, and it's all of a sudden it's a good deck. Uh, you can seriously just play Loot Hoarders, um, you can play Sylvanas if you got a Sylvanas. And you know, just a few more death rattles, and you just play. If Nizoth just resummoned Sylvanas, it's it's really great value just there. It's basically like you got to summon uh, Sylvanas again, and then you only paid four mana for a five seven. It's really good. That's it for legendary cards. I'm trying to not make this too long, but uh, let's move on. All right, really quickly, I'm just gonna go through a few various other cards that are at least relatively cheap on dust to create that you should uh, decently consider crafting. And if you don't have any copies of any of these cards, maybe only craft one because maybe you'll open up a second one in a pack in the future. 
First off, we've got Mistress of Mixtures. This card is a, like the one drop right now. It's just a really good card. Kills you. Uh, it's a 2-2. Two -two. It's a common, you know, very cheap to make. And uh, and if you're trying to play a, a really tempo-heavy deck that uh, is trying to get on the board and keep the board, this is a really good card. South Sea Deckhand. This card is basically using all those pirate decks. It's common. It's from the classic set. Um, consider it. Loot Hoarder. It's a really good card. It's common. It's from the classic set. Draws a card. Acolyte of Pain is another great card to consider crafting. Probably the number one card to craft because it is a common. You can basically put it in any of your decks as a free-to-play player and you're going to get some good value out of it. Bog Creeper is a great uh, common card. Uh, once again, if you're trying to play more of a late game card, it's just a common, simple 40 dust to craft if you want one of them. But he is in Whispers of the Old Gods, so he will eventually cycle out. But it's a good card. North Sea Kraken is really good for free-to-play players. He has a good battle cry. He, he's a big minion, and he's a common, also from uh, Grand Tournament, though. So we'll be cycling out relatively soon. The Jade Idol from uh, Mean Streets of Gadget Sand is a really great card. It's a rare, and uh, if you're playing a Jade Druid deck, you're going to need these cards. At least one, and uh, maybe preferably only one. So maybe just open up a few packs of uh, Mean Streets of Gadget Sand and just get one of these and you don't even have to craft it. Nourish from the classic set and just basically in every Druid deck uh, would highly consider crafting this card if Druid is your class. Eaglehorn Bow is a really good card, also from the classic set. Uh, almost every Hunter deck plays two of this card, so consider it. Dispatch Kodo is from Mean Streets of Gadget Zen, and it is a, it's a really good card. Um, whether you're getting uh, the hand buffs on it or not, um, it's just a good card. You can also play it next to like a Direwolf Alpha or if you have a Leoc on the field It will increase this his attack and Whatever you target will deal that extra damage as well Savannah high main is from the classic set and is There's almost always at least one of these in every hunter deck really good card blizzard is a good card, but uh, It's more for the late game mages uh, Especially freeze mage. It's only rare and it's from the classic set equality also from the classic set for Paladin, it is a rare, and it is so often in uh, in a lot of like mid range to to late game control Paladin decks because they can combo this with Wild Pyromancer to just kill the entire board, or you can combo this with Consecration to just kill all of your opponent's minions. Aldor Peacekeeper is a really good card, also the classic set. It's in a lot of uh, more of the control and mid range. Uh, Paladin decks. Really good card. From the Mean Streets of Gadget Zen, we've got the Grime Street Enforcer. Really good card. Uh, you might consider uh, crafting one of these, and or maybe just opening a few packs. I also want to mention the Grime Street Outfitter here real quick. Also from Mean Streets of Gadget Zen. Really good card. Basically you can put this in like so many Paladin decks right now and it's really good and it's just a common. Grime Street Protector, really good too. Um, also found in Mean Streets of Gadget Zone. Akinai Soul Priest has found its place in a lot of Priest decks, uh, especially because of a lot of the ways you can combo with it. Also, your hero power just becomes a deal to damage hero power, which is really good. And it's also from the classic set. Draconoid Operative. This card is probably one of the best cards in the game right now, and it's in the Priest class. And it's from Mean Streets of Gadget Sand. Really, really, really good card for a Dragon Priest deck. Undercity Huckster for Rogues. We've got this from Whispers of the Old Gods. This card is a pretty good card. It gives you good value. Uh, it's a Death Rattle, so if you have Nizoth, it'll resummon this. Pretty good card. The SI7 Agent has found itself in almost every Rogue deck because of its uh, combo effect. It's from the classic set. It's a really good card. Now this card depends on the style of deck you want to play, but this is a Shaman card, and this card is a, has really cool interactions. It's from Whispers of the Old Gods, so it'll stick around for a while. Uh, but it's really cool uh, trying to play these Evolve style decks that the Shamans can do. So you maybe want to consider it. 
Jade Claws is from Mean Streets of Gadgetzan, and it's a must-have for the Jade Shaman deck. It's a really good card, and weapons are really good. From the classic set, we have Feral Spirit. Really good, uh, really good card. It, it might, <laughs> I mean, this card is gonna stick around for a long time. It's been a, a nuisance to players for a long time, so if you're a Shaman player, <laughs> you probably need this card. Manatide Totem, also from the classic set. Really good card. Lightning Storm as well. Really good card, also from the classic set. Thing from Below, from Whispers of the Old Gods. This card it is so good. Such a really good tempo card for the Shaman. Uh, I mean, I could even imagine this card getting nerfed in the future. It's just found itself in almost every shaman deck because it's just so good you, so many times you're playing this card for zero mana it's just crazy doom guard from the classic set for warlock really good card found in zoo decks uh, mid-range decks it's really good siphon soul for the control warlock decks it's really good also from the classic set for warriors we have frothing berserker from the classic set as well uh, finds itself in any type of mid-range or aggressive warrior deck it's really good this card is insane right now. Small Time Buccaneer is like the, uh, I already said Mistress of Mixers is the one drop, but this is the one drop for weapon classes. It's literally almost always a 3-2 for one mana. Uh, it's from Mean Streets of Gadgets and it's, it's crazy. Knife Juggler is from the classic set and has already been nerfed before, but it's still, uh, find some play in more zoo style decks where you're just playing lots of cheap minions and it's throwing those knives out and it's it's doing work so so you might want to consider it here's the wild pyromancer i was mentioning before that combos with equality cabal couriers from mean streets of gadgets and you can use it in priest warlock and mage and its battle cry effect is really good especially if you have a brand bronze beard getting it twice so good mind control tech is found in the classic set and Sees play every so often, it's really good. Just a, it's just a good card. Questing Adventurer is really good in some rogue decks where they're trying to just combo. Uh, they conceal the Questing Adventurer in the next turn, they just play a million really cheap cards and just have huge Questing Adventures. Defender of Argus usually finds itself in zoo style decks, and uh, especially when there's an aggressive meta, being able to put up those two taunts is really good. Also from the classic set. Twilight Drake finds itself in some more control decks uh, that uh, usually have a bunch of cards in hand. It's also a dragon, and it's in the classic set. Azura Drake, as a free-to-play player, this is the card for you to craft. It is so good, you can basically put it in every deck that you're going to play as a free-to-play player, and it will be good. Gadget Zen Auctioneer for basically the combo druid decks and the uh, miracle rogue decks, you're just gonna need this card but maybe just play it safe and just play those tavern brawls and just open up packs every week and and maybe open up some classic packs because this card is really good drew to the claw really good card this card is really insane from mean streets of gadgets and freezing trap from the classic set also a really good card mana worm from the classic set really good one drop uh potentially just one of the best one drops in the game and Mage is gonna have it forever. Firelands Portal. You can get this for free. All you you get to play the the prologue of the uh, One Night in Karazhan expansion and just play it, and you'll get Firelands Portal for free. Faceless Summoner is also a really good card. Uh, it's just common from Whispers of the Old Gods. Cabal Talon Priest from Mean Streets of Gadgets and really good. Cold Blood and Conceal are both from the classic set and they're in the rogue class and they are both used in the same deck both common really good cards eviscerate also from the classic set really good card swashburglar is from karazan but i he's just so good he's a really cool card too and also if you happen to open up patches from mean streets of gadgets and you just you want this card i forgot to mention one of the craziest cards from karazan is the spirit clause for the shaman Oh, man, this card is just, it's so good. Your totems can be spell damage, you can, you play Azura Drakes, and this is just a three damage weapon, it's crazy. Lightning Bolt is a really good shaman card as well. Tunnel Trog is from League of Explorers, but 
will be cycling out relatively soon, so uh, you know maybe you don't want to waste any time with that. But this card is stupid. It's so good. The four mana seven seven from Whispers of the Old Gods. Really good card, and also in the common slot from the classic set for Warlock. Uh, in the common slot, we have the Flame Imp. You're definitely putting two of these in your Zoo Warlock deck. From Whispers of the Old Gods, we have Possessed Villager, also gonna be in your Zoo deck. Power Overwhelming from the classic set, Common, also gonna be in your Zoo deck. Darkshire Councilman is something to consider for your Zoo deck as well, also in the Common slot. And it's from Whispers of the Old Gods, so it'll be around for quite some time. Imp King Boss is gonna be leaving us in just a couple months, but is so good, so good, so it's up to you. Abyssal Enforcer from Mean Streets of Gadget Zen. This card is probably just another one of the best cards in the set. It's really good, and it's just a common. Deal three to everybody. Really good. Nizal's first mate is from Whispers of the Old Gods, so it'll be around for a while, and this is a must-have in your pirate aggro warrior deck. Slam is from the classic set. Really good card. We've got Ravaging Ghoul from Whispers of the Old Gods. It's also an excellent card. You'll find it in many mid-range and uh, late game warrior decks. Bloodhoof Brave is a considerable choice as well for mid-range and uh, late game warrior decks. Really good taunt. Grimy Gadgeteer is from Mean Streets of Gadgetzan and the hand buffing for plus two plus two is really good value. A card I just personally like a lot is Argent Squire. Uh, it's just kind of an annoying card. It's It looks weak, but it, the Divine Shield is just really good with it, and when you're playing a tempo deck, you just want to curve out, you want to play something on turn one, especially in Paladin decks that have synergy with Divine Shield. Uh, it's a good card. So that's going to be it for this free-to-play guide. Uh, I hope I presented you with some useful information. Also, don't forget that the arena is such a great place to get essentially free packs, free cards, um, but I would not recommend starting out with this. If you were a really brand new player, uh, just pl play with some friends, uh, play in the casual mode, um, and uh, just get used to the game before you uh, spend too much gold in the arena because it can be really discouraging if you end up paying more than 100 gold for a pack. If you have any questions for me or you have any video suggestions for me, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to check out my stream on Twitch every Thursday and Sunday. And uh, thanks for hanging out.